Right. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is House Wines and Mains. We're having a slightly late start this morning, but we are all here, or almost all here, on H556. Um, uh, Representative Beck is going to join us uh, a little later, but he should be in before we are finished. And I um, want to welcome Representative <coughs> the sponsor of the bill and Doug Bent, who is here to testify on the bill. Um, and I am just going to turn the floor over to you. So I introduce yourself for the record and then tell us about the bill. Good morning. So I'm Representative Catherine Sims, and I'm from Bashbury. Um, and I am really grateful for the opportunity to be here with you all to talk about H556, an act relating uh, to exempting property owned by Vermont recognized tribes from property tax. And I introduced this bill in partnership with the tribes and the co-sponsors to recognize that Vermont lands are the historic and current territories of the Western Abenaki people. And that stewardship of these lands was removed from the Abenaki when the Europeans made Vermont a state in 1791 um, and before a taxing structure existed. And so if passed, the property tax exemption would apply to property owned by a tribe or an associated nonprofit, provided that the parcel was used for tribal purposes and that it wasn't leased or rented for profit. And the property would be exempt from both the municipal property tax and the statewide education property tax. And, um, you know, while many of the tribes have nonprofit status, which they could use to seek exemption, um, on the parcels they hold, this bill, I think, is an important step to recognize the sovereignty of the Abenaki. And um, my understanding is that the exemption would currently apply to four parcels in Vermont. And I believe that it would have a diminutive impact on the revenues um, of our state. The development of this bill has been a collaboration with the four tribes and the Vermont Commission on Native American Affairs. And I'm really glad that that event is here and he can speak to the details of that process and the Native perspective on this bill. Personally, I see this as a really important next step following up on the eugenics apology of last year and the free access to hunting and fishing rights of the previous session. And thank you for the opportunity to, to talk to you all about it. Um, I do hope that you consider uh, taking it up and I'd be happy to answer any questions um, now or provide additional information or background as the community moves in the future. Do you, um, can you tell us where the properties are? You say there's four, right? Yeah, so there, there are four existing parcels that are either owned by the recognized tribes or a nonprofit associated with them. One is in Barton, um, one is down in the Brattleboro area. Um, uh, it's an El New parcel, the Barton one is an Oligan band, and um, there's a Swanton property owned uh, by Francisco and then uh, Brunswick Springs. So I just couldn't hear him. Sorry, Brun I'm sorry no. <laughs> Brunswick, Brunswick Springs is the first okay. parcel. Oh, okay. okay. Also owned by Francisco. Yeah, great. Thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sacred site. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Representative. Where is Brunswick Springs? Thank you for asking. <laughs> Brunswick. Uh, I think in the far corners of the Northeast Kingdom. Yeah, that's where Brunswick is, right? Yes. So yeah. I think it's a part of Brunswick. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and those four parcels represent the sort of diversity of ownership. Two are owned uh, by the uh, tribe itself, and the Cisco parcels and the El Nu. Um, property is held by the Vermont Land Trust uh, for the purposes of the tribe, and the Barton property is held by um, the uh, AHA uh, nonprofit uh, for the benefit of the um, Let's see, other questions anyone has? Yeah, Representative. Um, do you have yeah. acreage? numbers at all for these properties? Yeah, I, I believe in aggregate, it's about 150 acres. Uh, they range from very small parcels to slightly larger, but again, pretty pretty modest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, How about um, the uh, dollar figure? So we don't have a JFO fiscal note yet, but um, my understanding is that it's roughly $11,000. So what, in total. Yeah, but so 
but we need to know what the municipal impact is as well. So we'll get a fiscal note if we decide to uh, move act on the bill. Um, but they don't they don't do it until we've asked for it. So okay. uh, let's see. Did anyone else? Yeah, uh, Representative Odi had a question. Thing. So would you welcome? Would you also be asking for not to have to pay property in lieu of tax payments in lieu of taxes on those things? Yeah, so the, the I think, uh, intent or effort of the bill is to recognize the sovereignty of the um, Abinaki tribes um, and their stewardship of these lands before we had a taxing structure. And so the um, I think principle here is um, not taxing land uh, held by our indigenous community. Do you think the indigenous community might decide to buy more land? Uh, I think that's a great question for the affected community to answer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Representative Basil. Yeah, um, thanks for coming in. Um, you and I have spoken a little bit over the phone and also I spoke to Mr. Bent on the phone also, um, I don't know, 10 days ago or something to that effect. Um, and I'm, um, completely comfortable with the concept. I think it's a great idea. Um, I wonder if the committee would want to put some some guardrails or something about it. I can imagine a, a, a tribe um, obtaining a thousand acres and doing who knows what with it. Um, not that I suspect that that'll happen anytime soon, um, but down the road, who knows what happens. And so, so with the existing lands or more than that, I think it's a fine idea. I'm just wondering. Generally, what this committee does is to is to look into um, um, the the limits or the you know impact over time of it of something. And so I I just raise that for the committee as a something to ponder as we work our way through. Forward to your discussion, wrestling with those important questions. <laughs> uh, Representative Turkey, uh, thank you for <laughs> your testimony this morning. Representative, the uh, the four parcels or the four towns that you mentioned are, are those property that are owned by the tribes in all four cases, or since there's also the possibility, I'm just looking at the language here, the nonprofit organization that's organized <coughs> for the purpose. Yeah. So as I mentioned, the the Swan property is the headquarters for the um, um and that is the tribe. Um, the Martin property, for example, is owned by Abenaki Helping Abenaki, a nonprofit um, establishment. And so, so that represents two different approaches right now. Yeah. Um, Embarkment is held by nonprofit specifically for the purposes, uh, tribal purposes, whereas the Swan property is owned by the, the tribal. What about the other two? Uh, I, I believe Brunswick Springs is also owned. Um, by, uh, although they're maybe in the pro process of transferring that to, to their nonprofit. And um, the Elmu parcel in Brattleboro, I believe, is currently held actually by the Vermont Land Trust uh, on behalf of Elmu, um, recognizing that for many of the uh, um, having funds to uh, cover property taxes is a burden and, and limits the ability to yeah. double parcels. So just, I mean, I know it's 150 acres and a small, so a small amount to, to begin with, but some, some of it either currently is or could be um, uh, exempt because of the nonprofit status of the, of the owner of the. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned in, in the introduction, I think um, many of the tribes have the ability to potentially seek um, tax exempt status for the process that they have now. And yet this feels, at least to me, like an important effort to recognize the sovereignty of the of Inaki, um, and, and also recognizing that, you know, that right now the municipal tax conversation is a town by town conversation where one might, one town might choose to grant that exemption and another might not, which doesn't, um, in my view, lead to sort of equity in terms of treatment of, of a, a sovereign yeah. entity. I, did, I think I appreciate that point too. Just out of curiosity, are there other states that currently have an exemption like this? I do not know the answer to that question. So 
I am happy to ask NCLS if they would look into that for us. Thank you. <coughs> I'm sorry, Carolyn. Yeah, I represent. Um, <laughs> had this land been in the hands of of these tribes since before 1791? Uh, I do not know the histories of the individual parcels. Um, so that's a great question for the affected communities. I know that uh, the parking property, which is near me, uh, was something recently purchased by um, the band. Um, that said, again, I think originally all of this land <laughs> was stewarded by the um, Abenaki. So um, I'm not going to get that's how you look at ownership that's and that's access to land. <laughs> more of a philosophical question thank you so much one more um <clears throat> the um the eleven thousand dollar figure i know we're going to get to this sure yeah fiscal um is pretty low so i'm assuming there's probably not a whole lot of uh, development if any on these parcels for, <clears throat> is, are there any buildings on any of these do you know Again, probably a good question for those um, uh, owning those parcels now. But my understanding is that the Swan property uh, is the headquarters, um, so I assume so it, it has a building. building. But in Barton, um, it is completely undeveloped land uh, at the end of the Class Four road. Um, that Elm um, parcel uh, represents Long or maybe no more details because it's in your own district. But I think it's a, a small sacred site, um, a lot, and similarly, yep. uh, similar, small. I'm having trouble hearing you because of the blower. So I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, the mask says so okay. I haven't adjusted. So <laughs> yeah. Projecting. Um, yeah. I, I think I got it all. Just it, it, I think I think there's one building in Swan. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, either small parcels yeah. or undeveloped. And so the modest okay. yeah. taxing reflects right. undeveloped use. Okay. Uh, Should I follow up? Yes, that? you can. Yeah. Um, so read, in reading this, I'll get the glasses back up here. Um, in uh, on line three, under twenty one, it says, or well, the whole thing, or owned by a nonprofit organization that is not organized for the tribe's benefit. That yeah. is organized for the tribe's benefit, provided the property is used for purposes of the tribe and is not leased for profit or rent. <clears throat> Okay, I get that. So I'm wondering if in uh, well, any one of these parcels, if someone were to erect a casino, and I'm not sure, this might not be a question for you, it's getting into the weeds a little bit, but I'm just thinking ahead. I don't know if the, like the uh, Connecticut casinos are taxed or not, um, being on, you know, I, being owned by tribes, run by tribes, and they profit from it. I'm just wondering if, if we did that here, would would a casino that obviously rakes in millions of dollars um, be still, it would be exempt if it was on one of these parcels. I'm gonna but, defer to you all around the process of recognition, yeah, I but I, I believe that in the process of recognition, there were some determinations made about casinos Potential development or not. First, we have to legalize gambling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a major, like a guardrail. Um, it, it, uh, I, I, I sort of had a similar question. It says it's not leased or rented for profit, but doesn't say it it can't be used for profit. So right. I, I don't, I don't, I sort of understand the, the question you've got. Uh, Representative Phil has been waiting, so I'm going to go to him. Um, not with with anything critical, but I, I just wonder, we are going to hear from Mr. Bent, yes? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Did you want to jump in? Are you? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, my understanding, um, Representative Brennan, is um, in Connecticut, the casinos are on reservations. Yeah. Federally recognized tribes. <laughs> they have their own Federally recognized tribes enable the tribe to do a lot of things. Um, none of the Vermont tribes are federally recognized. Um, I don't think they qualify at present. It's kind of a long road to hope to get federal recognition. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, sacred sites, 100% in favor. 
no undeveloped land, 100% in favor. But I'm wondering, it's the job of this committee to look into things like um, casinos down the road and how they would be affected. And so um, it, it's a good question, that's all. You know, it's a good question. Um, great, thank you. Uh, are, you uh, are, there, are there other questions for Representative Sims? Not, I will move to Mr. Benz. Uh, so, uh, Welcome, and if you'd identify yourself for the record and offer a few comments, and if you're willing to answer questions, uh, there may be a few that come to play. Yes, I'm, I'm here to answer any questions. i uh, just introduce myself a little bit here. Um, Doug Bent from Braintree, Vermont, uh, with the uh, Kawasak of the Coas tribe, which is in the central part of Vermont. Um, we currently don't have any land owned by the tribe. Oh, we have a tribal garden that is on uh, my property in Braintree uh, where we're raising Abenaki food uh, and crops, the original corn, squash, and beans. Um, and uh, we don't have uh, money coming in. We, <laughs> we, we don't have a um, anyway, uh, raising money at this point, other than grants, which we've been very fortunate in the last year to receive a number of grants. And um, so if we did get property, uh, it would be helpful that uh, it be tax exempt. So uh, we wouldn't be burdened uh, with that expense. Um, let's see, I, I, uh, some of your questions about, uh, you know, the casinos and that, and, uh, I believe if you look at the, uh, one day all the tribes were recognized back in 2011 and 12, that, uh, that was, uh, put in there that there wouldn't be any casinos, uh, that didn't, that would be illegal for the tribes to do. Um, and so I don't, I don't think that's a concern myself uh, down the road, but I, I suppose you could put it in there in this bill if you'd like, I guess. Uh, we're we're my, mainly, uh, the Kawasak tribe is about growing food and, uh, and, and preserving the, uh, the old ways. Uh, we uh, currently, uh, this past year, we got a couple of uh, sheds. One is a, a, a teaching shed, which is a, uh, 12 by 16, and the other is a cooking shed, which we uh, do uh, preserve the, the food, uh, cook the food, uh, can it. Uh, we uh, teach uh, people how to preserve food and stuff. And, and so we're, we're trying, to, uh, trying to enlighten the Abenaki and the Vermont community on, on uh, the Abenaki culture and things that the Abenaki used to do. Uh, and so it'd be very beneficial if we could, like I say, have be tax exempt if, if we get land in the future and, and also for the, the tribes, uh, the Mississippi, the Nalhiki and the Elnu, uh, I believe some of the parcels you're talking about, they, they have them and uh, it would definitely help all of us because we pretty much live off grant money, if you will, uh, to sustain what we do. Um, so I guess, yeah, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you, that's helpful. Um, let's see if anyone has questions on the committee. I'm gonna ask one, maybe somebody already asked this, so I apologize, but um, so you've identified four parcels, but uh, so, um, so is the property owned in the name of the tribe in these four instances, or is it owned in the name of a nonprofit organization organized for the tribe's benefit? I'm trying to think it's sort of what that is, but, um, but there are circumstances where the property is actually in the name of the tribe. Is that correct? Or yeah, so I'm just pulling up my, my spreadsheet. <laughs> so yeah. okay. these details. Um, uh, so the property, Property on Barton is 46 acres. Uh -huh. um, it is 
uh, owned the deed holder is Abenaki Helping Abenaki, which is a 501c3 that's a, that's a, for the benefit a of a nonprofit organization. Um, the Brattleboro property is 0.7 acres. Um, and that is currently held by the Vermont Land Trust and they are transitioning it to the El New Abenaki, which is their 501c3. Um, the uh, Tribal Council building in Swanton is on 0.5 acres. Um, and that is owned by the um, Abenaki Nation of Missisquoi. So the, so the actual tribe, 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 is, tribe. The, is the owner of record. Okay. And then the fourth parcel is 100 acres in Brunswick Swing Springs, um, owned by the um, Missisquoi nonprofit um, for the benefit of, of that tribe. So three of them are the yeah. nonprofit. Could you repeat so, how, many, how many acres again at Brunswick Springs? 100. 104. So that's the big, biggest yes. piece. So of that's it. the largest. Yeah. And then, as um, Doug Bent said, that COAS uh, does not hold um, any parcels as of now. And, and the reference to personal property is that can someone tell me what that is intended to include? Uh, I think the intent is to focus on physical land, um, on real property. It's a, it, it may just be a drafting thing that says yes. real and personal property, but yes. really we're talking about real property. Okay. Property tax exemption. Yeah, right. Yes, I think that's a drafting. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Ben, if, um, if we're able to pass this, have you thought about transferring part of your land that you have those buildings on and that you've been using for the benefit of your band um, to a different ownership structure? Well, probably my children would appreciate it. But <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, 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 we're really looking to, to find a parcel in the uh, Newberry, uh, Vermont area where the Kawasaki of the tribe is originally from in uh, uh, that's, let's say, uh, the core area um, where the tribe has always had, uh, you know, uh, when the Jesuits came up the Connecticut River in 1675 and the Kawasak um, gifted them corn, at, uh, Indian corn. And uh, so then we'd like to get back into that area. Uh, and Braintree is, is a, you know, not all that far, but it's probably an hour and 15, 20 minutes from there. So, and most of the uh, tribe uh, members are, are in that area. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, yeah, we, we would really like to find property over that way if we could. Thanks. Uh, anyone else have a question? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Catherine, uh, I missed the acreage in Brattleboro. You were just. Uh, I'm wondering if it would be helpful for me to send the yeah. spreadsheet that I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just point seven. The tiny yeah. little. Yeah. 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 When we get a fiscal note, I assume it will spell out what these um, are. I don't know if you've shared your information with John Fiscal. Uh, anything else anyone has? Thank you very much for joining us and for um, giving us this puzzle to solve. Um, so it's uh, a pleasure to join you and, and uh, look forward to seeing any continued conversation. And I'm, I'm here if there are other ways that I can be helpful. Yeah, so Mr. Beth, thank you very much um, for your help. And uh, I think the next step if the committee wants to pursue this is to ask joint fiscal for a fiscal note and then we can look at that and look at the language we do. Uh, you're welcome to stay. Abby Shepard is here. She did the drafting on it. Why don't we take a couple minutes and just have Abby uh, or Anna's to the bill and any issues that might be in there. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. So for the record, Abby Shepard, Office of Legislative Council. Um, I just wanna respond before I walk through the bill to your question about why it, it uses um, both real and personal property. Um, 
So that language is used in almost all of the exemptions that are set out under this section 3802. Um, generally, personal property isn't subject to property tax um, other than the business personal property, which towns have to opt out of imposing. But that's included there um, as really just following the typical drafting standard for these exemptions. Um, going back to, and I'll walk you through the bill, the first, um, the first section is a findings uh, section setting out a statement of purpose. Um, I don't have much to add there in terms of tax policy, so I'll go on to the, the second section, um, unless there are any questions there or any concerns. Um, in section two, it inserts a statutory purpose. So as I'm sure you're all aware, there is a requirement for um, new tax expenditures to be, if they are enacted to include a statutory purpose. So it sets out um, statutory language explaining why the expenditure has been enacted. Um, otherwise the expenditure within a year will not be able to be implemented and enforced. So that's um, sort of true up language there. In the third section, which starts on page one, but the language really is all on, or sorry, page two, the language is mainly on uh, page three. It adds a new subdivision 21, and it is real and personal property as um, these exemptions all exempt, both real and personal property owned by Native American tribe that has been recognized pursuant to uh, Title I VSA Chapter 23, and that's the uh, state recognition by the Vermont Commission. Um, and as was mentioned by the witness, Mr. Bent, there, that recognition does not, there is explicit language in statute that says recognition by the commission shall not be construed to create, extend, or form the basis of any right or claim to land or real estate in Vermont or right to conduct any gambling activities prohibited by law. So just to clarify that that was the, the reference that was made there. So that does not extend the right to um, necessarily create any sort of um, casino or any sort of gambling activities that would otherwise be illegal under Vermont law. Um, as was pointed out, there are a few conditions created um, under this, this new exemption. So it has to be owned by the tribe or owned by a nonprofit organization organized for the tribe's benefit, provided the property is used for purposes of the tribe and is not leased or rented for profit. That is very similar language to an existing exemption for property owned by um, a veterans organization post. Um, that also requires um, the property not to be leased or rented for profit. Um, this does take effect on July 1st of 2022. So it would affect this upcoming property tax year. So there are a few um, sort of tax issues here to just point out to explain the consequences of the way this is drafted and, and what it applies to. As was mentioned, it does create an exemption from both state and municipal property taxes. Um, so that means there will be no requirement for a local vote. It will apply automatically once enacted. It will apply uniformly across the state. It means that a taxpayer will not have to pay municipal or state education property taxes. It also means that towns will not be required to make up any foregone revenue to the state. And that does mean that both uh, municipal and the education grant list will be affected. Um, and and those are all of the, the main points that I wanted to make to highlight. I didn't know if there are any other questions or um, particularly from the testimony you've already taken that you would like me to look into more. I think we've got one question. I, did, I just had one, yeah. Abby, um, when you mentioned uh, the gambling piece, I, I think you said as prohibited by law. Yes, correct? that's correct. So if we by any chance ever legalize gambling, in the state, would that then open the road for that? I would think. I think that's a correct. I believe so. Yes, if it were no, because it's only gambling activities prohibited by law. There are some. Um, this is not my area, but break open tickets, for example, are are allowed under Vermont law, um, but it's fairly limited currently. Yeah, I'm talking, I'm talking, casino, obviously. But so if we did legalize gambling and casinos were allowed and one was erected, this is all hypothetical, but just so I understand it, in the future, 
it would be exempt from all taxes, municipal and, and um, education. So the, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Say, unless, it, unless it's leased, leased or rented. Um, so, so it yeah. does have to be used for the purposes of the tribe. Um, right. And the language, the, the for-profit limitation does apply to lease or rent. So if you wanted to make it broader and say it could never be used for profit, that would the language would need to change. Okay. And, the, and there's also, if uh, long after I'm gone, we legalize casinos <laughs> <laughs> and it will be long after I'm gone, then, um, then, <laughs> then it's also possible that the statute, the, the recognition statute could be amended to say no. Um, I, I don't know why it would be, but that is certainly a possibility. There's not, it's not a constitutional provision. It's something statutory, so we could rewrite it. Absolutely. Yeah, just so you could. <laughs> just to be clear, I'm, I'm not saying I'm against that, you know, uh, but I'm, when I'm thinking with a casino comes a lot of other added costs for municipalities, sure. law enforcement, crime. Not that there's a lot of crime, but you, you do need additional law enforcement infrastructure. So that, that's the only way I'm. All, all the reasons why we shouldn't do it. So no, I, I just carried my own case. You did, <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah okay. Uh, let's see, uh, Representative Till and then Representative Kaiser. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. You know, it may not be the a long time after you're gone. It might be a short time <laughs> after you're gone. Um, but, but my question is, um, Mr. Bent uses his personal property, his personal land um, for, for tribal activities with the, that he described to us. Would he be affected by this ruling? When I look at the, the purpose, it's not obvious to me that it can't be an individual's property. So it would have to be owned by the Native American tribe or the nonprofit. Um, so personal property means, you know, movable, tangible property, not real estate. Right. That's the distinction made there. Um, and, and the ownership has to be um, the, the tribe itself or a nonprofit organized for it. So it would not apply to an individual, like their homestead. It would not um, be available to an individual's homestead. I'm sorry, you're muted, Representative. You believe that's in the statement of the purpose. You believe that's that part is clear. I'm not sure I understand your question. The the limitation to the tribe where that's found in the language is that your question? No. My question is when you state the purpose, is it? I'm trying to prevent a suit later on when the purpose of the tax of the the tax expenditure um, could be challenged because the purpose does not match necessarily the, the understanding that it has to be tribal owned. Right? That's, that's from what I'm asking. Um, sure. Are you, so there are two purpose statements. There's the statement of purpose, which is session law, which is sort of setting out the context. Then there's the statutory purpose, which refers to property owned by Native American tribes. Is it the finding statement that you find to be too um, not specific enough as to the tribe? So, so I'm gonna put this- Primarily wait, section two. Yeah. I, I'm gonna put this aside because um, a way of, uh, People coming in at 11.15, we need a break um, because it's uh, we've, we've all been in the room for a bit and we need to open it up. Um, and But if we continue to work on this bill, we will be working um, with legislative council on all those issues. So flag the question about whether these things are consistent, um, but I don't think we're gonna sort them out right here at the moment. Um, does anybody else have a question for our two witnesses? Um, thank you again, both very much uh, for coming in. And I, um, I, 
based on the questions, my sense is the committee would like to do more work on this. So what I'm gonna do, if it's okay, is I'll initiate the conversation with joint fiscal to get a fiscal note and so on. And then we'll, when we come back to it, we can look through some of the language questions that we have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ben, for joining us. All right. Thank you.